You know, when I first started this series, I would have never been able to guess that it would have gotten to a point where Henry's voice actress would be a vocal point of a video essay. But I mean, screw it. We've come this far, so why stop now? Henry's voice in the Thomas and Friends franchise has never truly been solidified. Every voice actor that has portrayed Henry has given him such a unique voice that unlike Thomas, Percy and James, there's not one simple voice that I hear whenever I envision him. It's because of this that as much as I like a lot of the side characters voice actors, I've completely forgotten most of them. And so to jog my memory, we're going to be ranking every English speaking Henry voice from worst to best. And for some context, here are all of the voices that I'm going to be taking into consideration. Keith Wickham, Kerry Shaw, Kevin Frank, Patrick Breen, Simon Hempworth, Robin Smith, Ringo Starr, George Carlin, Michael Angelus, Alec Baldwin, Michael Brandon, Pierce Brosnan and Mark Morahan. I'm not going to waste any more of your time, let's get straight into it. Coming in at the bottom spot is Kerry Shale. First, I must go and check that my special box is safe. Bubbling boilers! He was very, very fast. Let's be honest, I don't think this one even needs an explanation. It's always bewildered me how different the US voices are of the characters when compared to the UK dub. For some reason, the US made them sound so much more like cartoon characters, as opposed to the more grounded take of the UK version. While characters like Edward and Toby got it pretty bad, Henry undeniably got it the worst. I think when casting actors for the US voices of the characters, they very heavily looked at the hit era bible for inspiration. Hence why Henry sounds like the way he does. To cut them a little bit of slack, the voice that they give Henry in the US dub does ultimately fit the very wimpy Henry we get in the CGI series. With that being said though, this does not excuse the voice for being straight up bad. Its tone is far too high and makes Henry sound way younger than he actually is, and comparing him to the rest of the US voice cast for as bad as they are, he still sticks out like a sore thumb. Up next is Patrick Breen. I think Diesel believes in the legend of the lost engine. Of an engine more powerful than Diesel will ever be. That's why he wants to destroy her. I think we're all in danger. I've got boiler ache. Oh, thank you, Thomas. Special car will make me feel much better. For those who don't know, Patrick Breen stood in as a temp voice for Henry in the work print of Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Now, I will admit, I do find it somewhat unfair to include temp voices as an official voice actor, but if I didn't include him, this list would not be long enough to make a video out of. So I'm just going to include him anyway. It's still kind of unclear to me as to whether or not he was even trying to sound like Henry or if that's just his normal voice. But either way, within the context of the film and this being a Henry voice, it's really, really bad. You know how people say that Bulgy in Season 7 sounds like Angelus was just holding his nose? This is exactly the same case for me. If you remember what I said about Michelangelo's in the Percy Voices Rank video, I said that Michelangelo's voice for Percy in the work print of Thomas and the Magic Railroad worked within the context of the original version, because characters like Thomas sound much older, and so Percy sounding older as well makes sense too. And while yes, the general tone of Patrick's Henry is correct with it being a lot deeper, the very stuffy, ill-sounding voice simply does not work. Next on the list is probably my most controversial placement, Alec Baldwin. I'm just gonna say it, I do not like Alec Baldwin's overly cartoony voices for the characters. Now, don't get me wrong, in the context of Alec Baldwin's general vibe for narration, it does work, because Alec Baldwin in Season 5 narrates the stories in such a cinematic and grandiose way that having the characters sound so distinctively different from each other is kind of necessary. And so in that regard, I can understand that, but when you isolate his voices from the characters on their own, he's quite frankly terrible. Some of them definitely do work, like Bill and Ben, but characters like James, Gordon and Henry are simply incorrect. If you are genuinely trying to tell me that with a straight face that Henry should sound like this... Sir Topham Hatt has chosen Harold because he thinks he's more important than me. Well, he's not. Harold can't fly through tunnels. Then I don't even know what to say to you. You know when your friend says something really stupid and then you say it back to them in a mocking tone? That is exactly how Baldwin sounds when he's voicing either Henry or Gordon. If you like Alex Henry voice, then... sure. But in my opinion, he is undeniably the worst narrator to voice Henry. Next on the list is Simon Hempworth. It's nice to see you, Thomas. I've been taking passengers around the island, Thomas. And now I'm so tired that I need a little rest. Yep, you guessed it, it's a railway adventurer's voice. And unlike Robin Smith, where he actually gives a bit of a different performance for each character, Simon's Henry voice is simply an NPC. You could overlay his Henry voice over a picture of any other character and you would not be able to tell the difference at all. 
The only reason why he's above ones like Bourbon and stuff is because I don't really have anything bad to say about it, it's just very plain and harmless. Okay, so this is me editing the video right now. This is where Robin Smith was meant to go, and this is where I wrote him to be in the script. However, I think I listened to the wrong audio file because I just listened to his actual Henry voice, and... Oh boy. Hi, I'm Henry. Am I a steamy or a diesel engine? Yeah, that was a mistake on my part. Let's put him just above Kerry Shale. This, this, that's really bad. And the next one up is the one who they actually chose to voice Henry in Magic Railroad, Kevin Frank. There has always been one thing that really confused me about Magic Railroad, and that's that it can't really decide whether it wants to be Americanized or not. Despite them hiring Canadian voice actors for characters like Thomas, James and Percy, etc, both Linda Cardellini as Percy and Eddie Glenn as Thomas give them British accents. The same can be said for Toby and Gordon, but for some reason, Kevin Frank's Henry is still American, if you ask me? I'm not sure if it's me mishearing or not, but his voice just sounds, well, oddly American? The voice itself, regardless of the accent, is still not my cup of tea though. Much like Patrick Breen's Henry, I'm not a fan of the very stuffy sounding, sniffly Henry. This is also an issue with Magic Railroad with the whole special coal line. Once again, I feel like Kevin Frank could be a really good Henry voice if he just dropped the sick act. It's kind of a shame that we didn't get to see any more of him because I would have genuinely liked to see him give another go. Next is a pretty average voice in my opinion, Michael Brandon. Usually Michael Brandon's voices for the characters can be very exaggerated or just plain wrong, but in Henry's case, it's just kind of fine. In season 8, I really appreciate that the soft tone that Michael Brandon gives him, it makes him feel a lot more sympathetic in episodes like Henry and the Wishing Tree, for as bad as his episodes are. Michael Brandon though definitely had an issue with consistency with his voice. This is an issue with Angelus too, don't get me wrong, but it's a point that still stands. I think it's mainly because Brandon just kind of forgot what Henry sounded like, because imagine narrating Thomas for however many seasons and having to give each character their own distinctive voice. You're bound to forget some. But the thing is though, when Brandon gets Henry wrong, he gets it very wrong. With that being said though, he's not that bad. In fact, he could actually be a lot worse. Next up is Ringo Starr. I mentioned this in the Gordon video, but Ringo's voices just feel very same me to me. I think that ultimately comes down to Ringo not being a professional voice actor. I think the only characters who he gives distinct voices are characters whose voices necessitate over exaggeration. Characters like Donald and Douglas who are very distinctively Scottish or minor characters who need to sound very pissed off like the mother in Thomas Comes to Breakfast. And so when it comes down to the main cast, Ringo's voices always come off as the same. Of course there are the most minuscule details like Gordon sounding a tad more posh, but overall I feel like they do sound the same most of the time. But with that being said, I don't actually dislike his voice for Henry, because ultimately speaking, Henry would be a somewhat posh sounding British guy. That's definitely a stretch and I'm aware of that, but I am really looking for positives here. Next on the list is Keith Wickham. Faster, 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 oh, turn, turn, turn. Well, I have to stay in the shed. It's raining, Thomas. A lot. Just water. <laughs> now, I originally had this voice a lot higher up. We're talking top three. But after listening to him for a while and watching a few Henry focused episodes, it hit me. His voice is only acceptable in very small doses. In movies like Hero of the Rails, where he plays a very minor part, I think he's actually alright. But when he's the main character in episodes like Flatbeds of Fear, Henry's Magic Box, and Henry's Health and Safety, his voice gets absolutely mind numbing. There is something about the way that he talks and the borderline raspiness to it that really gets under my skin. It's borderline whispering, but at the same time, he talks in a tone that's low and it's also at a speaking level. It's so hard to put into words, but it just sounds so off after a while. I'm writing the script right now and I'm just going to try and like explain to you how he sounds to me after a while. He sounds like this. Next up is Mark Morahan. Thank you, Edward, smiled Henry. It isn't wrong, but we just don't do it. His Henry voice is an interesting one because he's a lot like Ringo in the sense that a lot of his voices in the stories that he narrates sound very similar to one another. For some context, the Mark Morahan audio that I use for reference is his narration of these books, where he voices all of the characters. It's basically Mark Morahan if you did the model series. And like I said, he's a lot like Ringo in the sense that I feel his voices kind of blend together. I feel like Mark could have done a bit more with his voices and that goes for all of the characters he does. I understand coming up with a unique voice for every character is not easy, but I would have appreciated a bit more of a distinct voice for Henry. 
just making the top three is George Carlin. The next three voice actors on this list have their very own unique take on Henry that I love almost equally, so these top three could definitely be swapped out depending on how I'm feeling. Anyway, George Carlin's Henry is very much a grandpa kind of take. George did this with a lot of characters like Gordon and Edward, but honestly, I don't mind it at all. Having the original three railway engines be distinctively the oldest sounding ones works completely fine in my opinion. I think one of my favourite moments from George Carlin with Henry is this one scene from Thomas Meets the Queen. He'll choose me, of course, boasted James. You, snorted Henry, you can't climb hills. This to me is a grandpa shutting down his cocky nephew. George's line delivery is so funny to me because he sounds genuinely offended that James even tried to speak up. And then of course you have episodes like Henry and the Elephant and Henry's Forest where you feel very sympathetic for him. Of course that's mainly a testament to the writing as well, but you've got to give credit where credit's due. George was very good at making you feel sympathetic for his portrayal of the characters. And I think this also does come down to George's narration sounding like a grandpa, and that's why we love him. Just missing out on the top spot is Michael Angelus. I came very, very close to putting Michael Angelus at number one, but I feel like it would be better to give somebody else the win this time round. Angelus as Henry is just simply so good. Is his voice particularly distinctive? No, not at all. But does he make you feel sympathetic for Henry like nobody else could? You're goddamn right. Henry's Forest is of course the main example I'm going to use here. I don't even need to explain why his performance is so good, because I'm sure you guys already know. But to make it short, before this episode, Henry was very much a big bossy twat, who while yes he did have some sympathetic moments, he's still a dick most of the time when we see him. When we saw this episode, it made us look at Henry in a completely different light. Both Angelus and Carlin narrate this episode in two very different ways. Angelus gives a more somber performance, and Carlin gives a more hopeful one. Both work very, very well, but I personally prefer Michelangelo's one just a little bit more. And you don't even mention episode moments like in The World's Strongest Engine where Henry finally pulls the train and Angelus delivers that really satisfying Oh, yes sir. And even to an extent, What's the Matter with Henry? What's the Matter with Henry isn't a good episode or anything, but Angelus will never fail at making you feel sorry for Henry. Especially when you have his season 7 borderline ASMR self. Also, for the record, I actually really enjoy Michelangelo in Season 7, but is that just me? I mean, I, I really like him. I would have genuinely really enjoyed seeing Michelangelo play Henry in Magic Railroad in the final cut. Sure, he didn't get James, but if you remember, the main reason why Angelus didn't get James' role is because he apparently sounded too old. But how would that be an issue with Henry? Henry is an inherently old character, and so sounding old wouldn't be an issue, right? And he's British as well, so I don't think it would be that much of a stretch. Probably a lot cheaper too. But coming in at first place, my personal favourite Henry voice, even though he only had two lines as him, is Pierce Brosnan. Oh my my, gasped Henry. Whatever will Thomas say? That may come as a big shock to some of you guys, but I adore Pierce Brosnan's five second performance as Henry. You know how I said that Keith Wickham's Henry sounded really bad because he sounded like he was whispering all the time? Pierce Brosnan could have gone down that route. But I could tell with that one line he performed that his voice would not get to that point where I would find it annoying. His voice sounds so soothing and gentle that I can't help but adore it. I think as Henry got older in the series, he would be a lot less of a dick to others. In fact, we actually see this in Thomas and the Toy Workshop, where Henry helps out Thomas after he gets stuck on the hill. In say, season 1 or 2, he would have been fuming at Thomas and would have told him to get a move on. Think better late than never. But all these seasons later, Henry would help out without a second thought. And, well, yes, Henry definitely got done dirty in the hit era most oh, of the time. No. When he was done right, he was done right. It's a real shame that we only got to see one line from Pierce Brosnan because I would have loved to see him voice Henry in season 12. I hate season 12 as much as the next guy, but I would kill to see his narration for Henry Gets It Wrong. Is the episode terrible? Yes, but I would have been able to hear his godly Henry voice in full form. It's the fact that his narration for that episode probably exists out there somewhere, but we just can't have it that really gets under my skin. But at the same time, it also makes the two lines of Pierce Brosnan Henry that we do have even more precious, and we can think about what could have been. If somehow the Brosnan season 12 dubs ever surface on the internet, you can bet your ass that the first one I go to will be Henry Gets It Wrong. And there we go, that is every English speaking Henry voice ranked from worst to best. There were some pretty hot takes in this video, so let me know what your ranking would be in the comments down below. And also let me know what character voices you want me to rank next. Thank you for watching and I will see you all in the next one.